Big Suge, season closer for the Grand Prix. We're kind of playing for all the marbles. There's no doubt that a lot of racers are coming into this weekend hungry for a win. I think Big Sugar's a just ideal race to end the year. The race begins now! I think there'll be some athletes that are aggressively racing to move up positions. There also will be some athletes that are probably racing defensively to try and just hold on to a position. There is more money on the line than most of these athletes have ever competed for in their life. $250,000 prize purse. There's no racer that's going to be comfortable at every single race. We all are out there to prove something, either to someone else or to ourselves. We're here for Big Sugar, and I am currently in second overall with 104 miles to go. Going into this last stop, there are two people that could take over the lead. Try to win the race and make it as hard as possible for everyone else. The race will change in an instant. There's going to be one moment that makes or breaks your day. I am 100% racing to win. And it's go big or go home. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've definitely questioned a couple of times, uh, oh, am I ready for this? And every time I am. But rather than retirement, I almost like to just more think of it as an opportunity for transformation or like reinventing myself. You are in a really good spot right now. Yeah. Pretty much top five could go any direction yeah. right now. So what? how are you feeling? For tomorrow getting into the grand prix gosh yeah this is uh it's been a dynamic one this series my schedule has been insane i have four media projects he seemed like he was a little bit stressed about the whole aerobar thing it's that no i didn't see him at all and so i'm not sure where he he has been yeah somehow i find myself sitting in fourth and just a couple of points off a podium so it's like there's no friends tomorrow. Like it's, you know, and that's kind of been a greater theme on this whole gravel thing is it's just been the, a monumental shift in the professionalization. Doing setup day. Can't get more iconic than like the downtown square for, for hosting the event and finishing the race right on it. Walton Family Foundation and you know, this community as a whole has just embraced cycling. Bentonville is now the official home of the U.S. National Mountain Biking Team. As mountain biking capital of the world, the city has 103 miles of biking trails connected to its downtown area. Big Sugar. It's a really interesting course in that it's a big loop out in the Bozark Mountains. The gravel is known to shred a lot of tires. The beginning is on the flatter side, and then the middle just gets really dynamic, punchy, steep climbs that are relentless. All those hills can break the field down pretty quick. I think this is a race of attrition. It's just like a slow burn. Who can survive the best? I have to do it my way. Sophia or Sarah could take over the lead. Mm hmm Out for blood. <laughs> This is the last big, deep race effort of the year, and I'm gonna empty the tank like I haven't probably all year. Uh, today is just like a super easy spin, spin out the travel uh, and recon the first 25K. There's been periods in my life where it has been only about just doing the work and getting the result. And you can do that for a little bit, but that's not why we're alive. That's not why we started turning pedals in the first place. Physically, I feel really good. I feel the strongest I've felt in a few years. There you go. Haley Smith, nice work, Haley. I mean, the year's just already been a win in a way, but nothing's riding on that. And who I am isn't riding on that. It's definitely about more than the bike racing. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever 
competed in a series and also been like competitive. <laughs> I've been in the mix for the most part the whole time, so like, like a lot of focus has gone into each race, and I've never had that consistent level of caring. I just know I'm in second. I know Sophia's behind me. I know Haley's in front of me, and then I have no idea because I just like, I just have to approach it like a bike race, like a normal bike race, not like the final one with like a super tight women's race. Like I know that, but I'm just trying to like forget, forget about it. <laughs> I just feel like I can handle a lot more and all these pieces have come together and then you just kind of are like well now what do I just like continue to try and win races like yeah but in the back of my mind there's this space of like there should be more women out here and there easily could be over the last six years, I've learned a ton about how to be a female athlete and having a mentorship role, there have been others that have helped me along the way. It would feel like a loss if I didn't help pass that down. Sarah always gives back, even when she has like a thousand things going on at one time. She invests time into people she cares about. There's something about riding bikes I don't know what exactly, it, maybe it's just like the rhythm that gets to me, but this thing, this two-wheeled thing has shaped me. Every time I pedal, it shapes who I'm becoming. Bike racing is everything. It's full of community and like, self-exploration and getting to explore a new place of the world. And it's so much bigger than just what result you get. This is a happening place. Uh, it's a great vibe and feels like it's becoming the bike mecca. Downtown's bumping, the expo's hopping. Bikes everywhere, people everywhere. It's so exciting to see. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful. Uh, Pete Stedna is my favorite racer. I just got to meet him. And Normally I'm here riding mountain bikes, so I thought I'd come try the gravel. Kind of evolved uh, into gravel and it's so much better. Doing the uh, big sugar, the hundred miler. Big sugar. Yeah, the hundred. Big sugar for me too. I'm gonna do the hundred. This is my first time racing uh, little sugar. So we're biting off a, a small bite, and next year it'll be the 100. I'm not fully prepared for it. Turned 50 this year, and this will be hopefully finishing my seventh race of the year upright and with a smile on my face, which might as well be a podium finish for me. It's a little hard to like stay motivated and training for like a super important race this time of year. Like normally we have races this time of year, but they're like B level races kind of, but this one it's like super important. So um, definitely had to stay a little more motivated and work a lot harder this late in the season, which has been fun. But yeah, definitely excited to disconnect and hang the bike up for a few weeks and just sit on a beach in Mexico. <laughs> Sounds real nice. Look at me cooking breakfast for Russell. He's out building his bike. Yeah, he's gonna owe me one on Saturday though. Like, remember when I made you breakfast? Now I'm skipping that pole. Mm. <laughs> For the worst case for you, you finish where you are. Yeah. Right. And like best case, you jump all the way to second. Yeah. So gonna go full send, which is kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I think we got three hours. We could probably check out about half the course. Yeah. Probably like. Yeah, last 50, 60 miles would be good to see. That's kind of the most important anyway, and then dial in the rest later this week. Yeah. We should probably see where that dog is that bit Cole. That'd <laughs> be nice to know. Yeah, Cole got bit by a dog the other day, so we're gonna send Russell first, <laughs> and uh, he's gonna get it out of the way for me. Welcome, Peter Stetna, to the Gravel Family Podcast. Thanks, you guys placed me like 12 o'clock in my vision is a Strider tandem bike. <laughs> and I have three month old ta uh, twins. So I it feel was meant like to be. I, this is, yeah, this, I'm being sold right now. I'm just going to stare at this for the next hour. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, like, was like, yeah, first guess. We've already made you know, I was one of the earlier adopters to this gravel space. And I have been put into a position somewhat and accepted a position of of standing up for what I know makes this special, having come from the elite world tour road. 
I've seen a monumental shift in gravel and I have been struggling to accept it because I'm worried that it's losing its soul, so to speak. And I know this is an often mocked thing, but the gap is widening between the age group participants and the professionals instead of the collective adventure. I do find myself on more just like fun soul rides. You know, because that's, like, that's kind of my the point is like make sure to get off road. It's not just like road bike watts intervals. It's you have to sprinkle those in to make sure that you can perform. But then there's also just like I'm gonna go out for a five hour ride and do this epic trail out at the coast that I haven't seen yet. You know, and yeah, I'm gonna you, get there. you're able to like actually enjoy. Your, you have more freedom. Yeah, yeah. I I mean I I live what I do. It's not just do the bike race. That's awesome. It's your passion. Exactly. I feel like that balance of lifestyle and community has become off balance, right? It's, it's more about performance only. I have to realize that the game has changed. I don't have to like it, but that's the world we live in. And as we talk about internal happiness, the way that you win and the respect amongst peers within the group counts for something. Tomorrow, it's, it's all business, but we're all going to be doing that same game, so... Especially it's since it's the last race for so many yes. people, they're going to be leaving it all out there on the course. Exactly. It's a beautiful morning here in the mountain bike capital of the world, Bentonville, Arkansas. However, you won't see many mountain bikes here at the start line of the Lifetime Big Sugar Gravel presented by Mazda. The last stop on the Lifetime Grand Prix Series. Final race, pretty exciting. A lot of good energy out here. Jason's had a tough year this year. We're just hearing that he's got, got some sort of sickness, woke up aches, pains, chills, feeling like crap, so I feel bad, man. You gotta start five races and you gotta start Big Sugar. And they are off. We have 915 riders from all backgrounds, including our 40 plus Grand Prix contenders. The field is as deep as these roads are dusty. And while the forecast is for sun, high winds may add to the challenges these riders will face today. There's multiple World Tour riders from Europe here. A lot of Europeans are very American gravel racing curious right now. There's no bigger engines than the World Tour in, in Europe. As the riders start out, we expect to see the men stay in a big group for the first 10 to 20 miles. Big Sugar is a true gravel race, so it'll be interesting to see how some of the World Tour riders like Alex Howes and Logan Owen fare in this type of terrain. So it's always cool to have you know some different guys racing and bringing that world tour and racing mentality. They're really strong, but maybe gravel racing is a bit different. There are people who have the fitness to get in front of you, but maybe not necessarily the skill to ride there. World tour guys have bigger names and everything going into the season, but look at the top five in the standings of both the men and women. It's predominantly mountain bikers. As the men continue to press the pace, the pack is already broken up into a lead group of about 15. No big surprises here with Keegan Swenson, Russell Finsterwald, Cole Patton, Lachlan Morton, and Peter Statna all represented in that group. As they approach the first checkpoint at mile 38 in Pineville, it appears no one will be pulling over to stop. So a big controversy this year has been feed zones, unfortunately. And I kind of kicked the hornet's nest on that, admittedly, um, which, you know, I should never have done online. Yeah, Pete's probably not very happy either because we didn't stop at all the aid stations and he wanted snack breaks and stuff out there. So. We lost a lot of respect for those mountain biker guys out there. They used the feed zone to attack because they ate camelbacks. You know, we'd be coming into an aid station, for example, and everyone would be like, okay, like, let's take a moment. Let's like kind of just look out for each other and, and take a second to use that to create the gap instead of actually just use their strength or their technical know-how to create the gap was, it, it felt like a low blow. 
For me, I like to go and you know race every race to try and win, but at the same time, also like having a good time. Like I love these races because there's a lot of unknown. You have to pick the right tires and the right bike, and there's still a little bit of tactics, a lot of fitness. Now that the men are on the other side of the Pineville checkpoint, this is where those punchy hills are going to become a bigger factor. I don't expect that will be a concern for Keegan Swenson though. He may have already secured his win in the Lifetime Grand Prix, but being the competitor that he is, I wouldn't be surprised to see him contending the win today. It seems he has really discovered what the spirit of gravel is all about. At this point, like I consider myself just as much a gravel racer as I do a mountain bike racer. For me, like the spirit of gravel is whatever you want to make it, you know, like there's not a whole lot of rules and if you want to go there to win, you can go there to win. If you want to just go and have a good time, you can do that too. Just five minutes behind the lead men, Ruth Winder is powering ahead, leading our women's race. Sofia Gomez Vichafane, Alexis Scarda, Emily Newsom, Rose Grant, and Paige Onweller are in a chase group about 60 seconds behind. There is still a lot of course remaining, so hopefully Ruth Winder can keep this lead that she is working so hard to create. I thrive when I race with the men. Like, I love it. These mass start gravel races really bring some interesting dynamics to the race course. Pro women are contending with pro and amateur men for position, and that especially is true on the start line. Remember just earlier this season at Unbound, Sophia got a strong position early in the race and kept that gap growing for the whole 200 miles. Every move matters and the positions gained early in the race are likely to have massive repercussions later on. If you don't make a fast group, that group in front of you is gone. As our lead women continue towards Pineville, it's Rose Grant pulling over to the side and she appears to be fixing a flat. There are so many elements in a gravel race that I'm uncomfortable with. And one of her last professional races, you really want to see her end on a high note. She is going to have her work cut out for her now if she wants to catch up to the lead group. I don't mind starting with the men, but you can lose the race just because you don't know where the race is and you never knew where the race was. Ruth Winder has really set a blistering pace for the women's field at Pineville. She has a full four minute lead over the chase group of about six riders. Those big groups and riding with the men, it's all pretty intimidating. I'm not intimidated. I'm pretty aggressive. Faster, faster, come on. I can't always race like that with the women because I hurt their feelings, I guess. <laughs> Back with the men, we still have 12 or so riders holding in that lead group. With Keegan's lead secure, this is a race for second place in the series, currently held by Alexi Vermeulen. For me going in racing, who do I think can actually put themselves in a place to win? Um, it's probably Keegan and Pete. Alexi has been consistently at the front of the pack, but has yet to reach the top of the podium this season. I'll be looking at Alexi. Uh, he's been consistent all year. I'll be watching for him. It's kind of this race within the race. We all know who to look for. Cole Patton definitely has the fire under him. Fighting to defend his podium position, he's currently sitting third in the Lifetime Grand Prix with Pete Stetna trailing by three points and Russell trailing by five. Cole's incredibly strong. I underestimated him twice last year, but every endurance event so far, he struggled to be there at the end. I'm really motivated and this whole year it's been so much work, accumulated so many races and we're down to the very last one and everything matters even more. It looks like a couple of guys are making an attack off the front, Borselman and Grotz, two dangerous contenders but no one else is chasing. Now Grotz has folded back in but Borselman has worked up a 90 second lead and it's still growing. The pace is getting heavy as a few riders are falling off the back, including Logan Owen. On the women's side, Ruth is maintaining her sizable lead. Ruth Winder is one of the Grand Prix competitors from a road racing background, and she has had a hard start to the series. There was a bad wreck at the Sea Otter Classic, which caused her to miss unbound gravel, but the talent has always been there on the road, and if she can hang on to this lead, we might be witnessing her arrival as a top tier gravel cyclist as well. Behind Ruth, Paige Ornweller has moved into second place. Alexis Scarda and Emily Newsom are now working for third and fourth. And our Grand Prix leaders, Haley, Sarah, and Sophia are bunched up just a few spots back. Okay, 
Yeah, so Haley Smith, Sarah Sturm, and Sophia. So this is actually our top three in the overall, but they're in seventh, eighth, and ninth. So kind of interesting. The difference from, say, fourth place to seventh place, those few points here and there, that can still have huge ramifications in where these female riders end up in the overall leaderboard. As the men approach the final checkpoint, Borselman has a two minute lead as he passes the timing mat and approaches the Whistling Springs Brewery. With Borselman's mechanical, the men's lead group continues to dwindle. Cole and Pete have also fallen off the back, leaving just six riders in the front group. On the women's side, Ruth Winder is out of the lead. It is now Paige Onweller at the front of this race. Onweller has been unrelenting, pounding the pedals to chase Ruth down. She managed to close a four minute gap and now holds the lead at the front of this race. Emily and Alexis are about three minutes behind Paige and working hard to bring her back while Ruth has fallen all the way back to fifth. With the men, the lead group is now down to just four after Roche and Howes have also fallen off the back. This very well could be a sprint finish. We will see who in the group has anything left in the tank. Looks like we've got a four-way battle. Vince Adamerge, Steve Swinton, and Mustard Rio and our four leaders here inside six miles to go now. They've now made it back to Bentonville and only have a few miles left to the finish. We're going to see a lot of jockeying for position here to see who will be first to make an attack. And Fincy makes a move from the back and he is alone. Alexi and Adam look to Keegan to chase and he just shrugs. They are letting him go alone off the front of this race. What a race indeed. Russell Finsterwald takes first, Keegan second, Adam Roberts takes third, and Alexi Vermeulen comes in fourth. Alexi holds his second place finish in the Grand Prix while Russell's finish brings him up from fifth to third, knocking Cole off the podium. Pete Stetna will end up finishing fifth. Now it's the women's run at the finish line. As they start back into town, it looks like nobody is going to touch Paige's now six minute lead. But you know who is making moves is Rose Grant. She was in 14th at the last checkpoint, but is steadily closing in on Lauren DeCrescenzo in fourth. This is your winner, Paige Onweller! And it's going to be Paige Onweller taking the win. Paige is in her first season of pro cycling and she was the dark horse of the Lifetime Grand Prix series this year, but she is making sure people know her name now. I was like, I might implode at any moment, but no, I just kept going and yeah, I felt good. So it feels really, really good. Emily Newsom comes in second and Alexis scarred a third. Rose Grant made it all the way back to fourth place. Won an amazing comeback for what may be her last professional race of her career. I thought my day was over at mile 30 when I flatted. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Sofia Gomez coming across in seventh, giving her a second place finish in the series. Sarah Sturm moves to third, while Haley keeps her first position in the Grand Prix. Happy for it to be done, you know? That was super hard the whole year. <laughs> 
Yes. So glad to be done. Uh, so many emotions. It was just hard, but it's over and it was fun. So, yeah. Fought as hard as I could to the finish, so that's all I can ask for. He attacked on the flats down there, and both those guys looked at me to chase, and I'm like, no, I'm not chasing him. I've sacrificed so much to get here, and yeah, I'm just thankful. I had a lot of setbacks this season, so this feels really good. What an incredible race and a fantastic end to an exciting season. I'm super grateful for the athletes that gave us a chance this year. We're in the mass participation business and we do that to try and just help people figure out how to live a healthier way of life. Our team is just honored that this many athletes would actually want to come out and be a part of our events and a part of this series. So thank you to all the Lifetime Grand Prix athletes that raced with us this year. That to me is, is probably just as important as who, you know, who wins and who wins the series. It's what a way to end your year, huh? Yeah, yeah, today was nice. You gotta be so up. pumped. Yeah, very excited. Our top three podium for the men's overall in the Lifetime Grand Prix, in third place, Russell Finsterwald to the podium! Lifetime's a billion dollar company, and they're listening to what we want to do. In second place, from Boulder, Colorado, with 136 points, give me Alexi Vermeulen! It's added structure and validation to the sport in the U.S. that is needed for a long time. Lifetime Grand Prix men's champion, from Eber City, Utah, with 149 points, Keegan Swenson! Like, I've had quite a few people tell me, like, it's been really cool following you in the Grand Prix. Like, I didn't follow cycling before the Grand Prix. So it's, like, cool to hear that, to know that it's working and that people are engaging with what we're doing. The difference between, like, right now and the beginning of the season, I feel like a different human. In second place from Heber City, Utah, the 134 points, it's Sofia gomez visha I hate how much I love gravel racing, and I love the drama, I love the craziness of it. And your first ever women's champion of the Lifetime Grand Prix, presented by Mazda, Haley Smith from It's super fun to win. It's not long-term fulfilling to win. If you are all about the win, then you're failing almost all of the time, no matter who you are. Most of my reflection about 2022 will be about looking forward to 2023 and how excited I am. It's been really cool to challenge ourselves constantly against each other and learn from each other in that way and grow together. We're fortunate that we can make a career, but it's riding your freaking bike, so it's pretty cool. What you do on the race course is really important, but it's still only 90% of your job. I do think that your role is to be an ambassador for the sport and to inspire people to go ride their bikes. You know, I, I hope that someday people look back and they say, you know what, to, that, you know, Lifetime had some positive impact, not only on the pointy end of the spear, the professional side of cycling, but to me, that's just a piece of lifting up cycling as an industry or as a whole, right? Our goal is help to elevate the sport give these athletes an opportunity, but also have them help us open this sport up to so many more riders that haven't discovered it yet. What an incredible inaugural year for the Lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda. Congratulations to everybody for these hard fought wins. We will see you all next season.